my D-Day story, my wife's infidelity and the end of more than 19 years of being together. So everyone is sharing their story on here of their D-Day. So I will share mine. Buckle up as this will be a long story. Needless to say, it's complicated. My D-Day was December 8th. I learned the night before that my wife, 43F, had not only been having online affairs since the beginning of November, but by the end of November, she had a physical affair with another man. Needless to say, I was crushed. I had a morning meeting, I worked from home, with my team, but I wasn't able to talk because my mouth was so dry. My wife was out of town at her mom's house, due to her mom had just had cancer surgery the week before. After my meeting, I hopped in my car and drove to five hours to see her and talk with her. I started the conversation with, how is our marriage? She then unloaded on me and blamed me for everything wrong in her life and anything bad I may have said slash done for the last 24 years. I was speechless. I didn't know what to say. I point blank asked her, are you pursuing other men online? She told me, no. I then showed her where she had left a review for an Airbnb. She had mentioned how the beds were comfortable and the kitchen was well stocked. She then laughed and told me that her friend, who is getting a divorce from her husband due to cheering on him, wanted to see what an Airbnb was like. I was crushed once again because she was not willing to be truthful with me. After I brought her back home, a few days later, she booked another Airbnb in town. She told our three children, 17, now 18, 15, and 13 slash 2 pink and 1 blue, that mommy and daddy need some time apart before one of us ends up with a rolling pin in their head, that is my head by the way. She had wanted to catch an Uber ride to the house, but couldn't so I gave her a ride there. She didn't want me to know the location, nothing suspicious here, keep scrolling. On Wednesday, she asked me to meet with her so she could talk with me. I agreed and we talked. She told me she wanted a separation and gave me this letter outlining her rules for the separation. They were completely one-sided, e.g. we are not going to tell our parents. She doesn't want her mom to know because of her having stage 2 ovarian cancer. I am in agreement with her about that. I think the news would kill her mom or her mom would kill her for what she has done to our family. Her dad cheated on her mom. The next day, I was able to put some thoughts together regarding our conversation from the night before. I wrote my thoughts down and sent her a text asking to meet so I could read it to her. She told me she couldn't as her mom had her first follow-up visit with her doctor and she was going to be talking with her on the phone. I thought all day. Since I was heading to get my kids from school, I thought I would swing by and drop the letter off at the door and then send her a text requesting her to read it. Then we could talk it over at a more convenient time. When I showed up, there was a truck parked out back. The house was on a corner lot. I took a picture of the truck from the street and left. Fast forward to the 28th of December, my daughter's 18th birthday, and I find her at this guy's place of business. He had a small business and she is there sleeping with him. My, now 18-year-old, daughter and her boyfriend, soon-to-be husband, were in the car, but we didn't go inside. The guy's truck was the same one that was parked out back of the Airbnb. This lover number two if you are keeping count. Once again, I am crushed, story of my life now. I sent her a text and informed her that I would no longer be keeping her little secret. So, something you don't know about me is that I am a computer programmer and skilled in cybersecurity. I used my skills to find the true identity of each of these men, so-called. I also used that information to find the names of their wives. I contacted both wives the same day. I'm very glad that I did this as they had a right to know what kind of dirty men they had. Now, my wife had to go back on the prowl to find new men as I just burnt the bridge to the previous two lover. The wife of the second lover informed me that he and my wife, so-called, meet on, insert sketchy website name here. So, I go and look on the website and can't seem to find her. The next day, my wife, so-called, is in our room and on her phone. I see over her shoulder that she is looking at some profile and the picture of the person is blurred out. I quickly go back to, insert sketchy website name here, and find that she has a profile, again. She is still on the same website today and meeting with lots of men. She doesn't know that I know, but needless to say, I do. As of last week, we both agreed to a divorce. Truth be told, it is not what I want, but I don't think I could ever trust her again. Never in our 24 years have I questioned her commitment to our marriage, until her friend came to town. That is when my spidey sense started going off that something is not right. Turns out once again my spidey sense is on point. So, to put a bow on this long story, sorry. I have been crying my eyes out from the day before D-Day. That is up until yesterday. 
I have been having panic attacks in front of my children. Yesterday, I seem to have turned some sort of page. Today is day two of me not crying for her. She is not crying for me, so why should I? She doesn't even have the decency to apologize for what she has done to not just me, but to our family. She is even still lying about where she is going when she is meeting up with all of these different men. She doesn't know yet, but both our daughters know everything. I didn't even have to tell them. She is just that bad at keeping a secret. My youngest daughter is having some anger issues, but we have agreed to go break some things this weekend to try and process things in a healthy way. I could share much more of this story, but I am trying to wrap this thing up. If you are going through what I am, know this. You are not alone. You will get through this. Take one day at a time. Find friends who you can talk to and cry on their shoulders. Go someplace in your car and scream. Do what you need to in order to process the pain. Just remember that you are strong. You will make it through this. You are the better person and you did not deserve this to happen to you. You did not create this situation, but you also can't fix it. Your WS will have to come to grips with that. I am tired of crying for someone who is not crying for me. I refuse to let her destroy me. She has broken me in ways that she will never understand. I refuse to remain broken. I will heal. I will be stronger. I will make it through this. If you don't feel this way and you don't have anyone to talk to, DM me. Nobody should have to go through this alone. I hope your days get better. Just know that I am sending hugs your way. I think it is time to file for divorce and have her served. Stop having conversations with her, and send her a co-parenting app. This is the only way she can communicate with you. I also think it is time to call her mother thank her for the time she gave you and being kind to you, and let her know you have filed for divorce and why. Op make sure you are taking care of you, emotionally and physically. Take care of your kids, let them all know what you have done after it is completed, then ask them if they would like you to be the primary parent and request child support from her for the next five years. Op at some point she will eventually figure out the grass is extremely dry and barren on the other side of the fence. Then she will come crawling back, and make sure you are in a great place and moved on, and unavailable to her. OP, my girls have already told me they don't want to live with their mother. My son doesn't know the details, yet, but soon will. Not because I am going to tell him, but because his sisters know and they will tell him. After I have had a chance to set him down and let him know that his mother and I are getting a divorce, then it will be game on. We both have our own attorneys and hers is working on the first draft of the divorce papers. However, here in Alabama, they frown on sources that cheat and that is going to tilt the court in my favor. I will work with my attorney to ensure we do all that we can to protect my kids above all else. You need to expose her affair to everybody who must know, family and friends. Nothing kills the romantic side of the affair faster than sunlight. Make her accountable of her deeds serve divorce papers and cut all support. Check for an attorney. Review your obligations and rights. Protect your children. OP, I've already started telling my family. I haven't talked to her family yet, but I will. I have documented proof. I can't tell her mother though because of cancer and her chemo treatments. I truly feel it could kill her and I don't want that on my head. I love her and will hold on to that information for now. As for the attorney, I already have one and she is good. In the state of Alabama, they don't care much for cheaters. So, I will be leveraging that as much as possible. That coupled with the fact that my girls have already stated they don't want to live with her. I am feeling good about my chances. I will protect my children above all others and including myself. They are my world and I will do anything for them. Sorry this happened, but glad that you've already decided it's best to move on. Instead of asking yourself the myriad of questions a lot of the betrayed ask. There is no point. She cheated 3x and you decided to just go about your life. It's not your fault. Or your responsibility to even question what happened. Good on you and good luck. Sorry OP but it sounds like she checked out of the marriage some time ago and didn't have the guts to just tell you it's over. For you it's pain but for her it's just another day of the week.